So we we have already shared the first sharing which I could share in our assembly. We shared it during the Kesha meeting. So in case you're asking yourself, what is the first thing that you will share on today? I have already shared. I shared during the Kesha meeting. So this is the second sharing. But it's a second sharing on a Sunday when most of us are around when most of us are around, when most of us are around. Whilst I was in Zimbabwe, there was a certain message which was impressed within my heart, which was impressed within my heart. I had written notes and even researched on that message. But then when I arrived here, ha, <laughs> I received a different message and I had to obey. I had to be flexible the same way I had to be flexible during the Kesha meeting which we had. The same way I had to be flexible during the Kesha meeting which we had. So I'll be sharing shortly on that message. Yes, but before I do so, it has been stated that I have been sent. It is true. I have been sent. I didn't come here in my own initiative. Dr. Ian Love sent me, the general overseer of Divine Kingdom Baptist Ministries. So I'm here sent by him. I have to state that. And I thank the Lord for his life very much. He has been a blessing. He has been a blessing in my life and that of my family, as well as the many other lives around the world. We thank the Lord for what he is doing through him. We thank the Lord for what he is doing through him. So having been sent by him, under the inspiration also of the Lord God Almighty who spoke to him. I stand today in line with the mission, with the mission which uh, Dr. Ian Lovo stands on. The same mission, the reason why I'm here, the reason why I'm here in Nairobi, Brother Kitao, the reason why I am here, it's in line with nothing else but the mission of DKPM. Yes, I'll just recap on it. I know that we know the mission, but I have to say it again. That's the reason why I am here, to join hands with you to join your hands with you as we evangelize to all nations. To join hands with you as we evangelize to all nations. And also enhancing together, enhancing together, enhancing Kingdom consciousness. What kingdom are we talking about? The kingdom of light. The kingdom of God. To enhance a consciousness. To enhance a consciousness. To enhance a consciousness. To deliberately do it. Not by chance, but to purposely enhance a consciousness. A consciousness of God's kingdom. So that when we sleep, the last thoughts before we sleep, they are of God's kingdom. 
If possible, even when we dream, our dreams are in line with the kingdom of light. Even when we wake up, ah, our minds throughout the day, they are focused on God's kingdom. And also to enhance capacities within believers. All of this, we are doing it together. We are talking even during the Kesha night, during the last 30 minutes of the Kesha night on the development of capacity. On the development of capacity. Appreciating the Lord for increasing our capacity. Increasing our capacity in the various facets of life. So that at the end of the day, we are able to fulfill his original purposes concerning our lives. His original purposes concerning our lives. So, I really, really appreciate the servant of God in absentia as well, Dr. Ian Love, as well as the evangelist, Dr. Angel Love, and the entire leadership of DKBM Global. I really, really thank them even for sending me here. So, we'll quickly go to the message for the day. It's a simple message. May you tell the person next to you that it's a simple message. Simple message. I'm not sure if they had. Kindly remind them. It's a simple message. It's a very, very simple message. Very, very simple message. But also important. But also important. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have brought us this far. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. James chapter 1 verse 22 that will be our keynote scripture for today James chapter 1 verse 22 James chapter 1 verse 22 James chapter 1 verse 22 It reads from the NIV. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Almighty Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, these are your people, Almighty Father. They are seated and ready to receive your word, the word which you gave me. In Jesus' mighty name, I ask Almighty Father that as I share it, you continue to speak to me concerning this word as much as you will also be speaking into their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, 
Almighty Father, by your Holy Spirit, who dwells within us, may you touch and transform each and every single life in this place. All to your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Yes. I was just uh, reflecting on the number of messages which we have received so far from the start of our year of the outpouring our year of the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit the year which began last 2023 last September 2023 September up to now it's almost 44 weeks it's almost 44 weeks we've been receiving messages brother Kitao from September up to now about 44 weeks. Receiving messages sometimes during online services. And in other days, during in-person meetings like the one which we are having today. The Lord has been speaking. 44 weeks, my brother. Ha, that's a lot. Let's just say you were attending two services each week. At least two. It means by now you would have had uh, about 88 messages. Eight, eight messages. 88 messages. Someone was standing last week. Last week it was Reverend Ndombi. He was sharing with us. He was standing on this pulpit again. Sharing another message. Powerful message. Which was touching on the nation of Israel. Today, Pastor George is standing before us. He's also sharing another message. 88. Another message. I'm saying 88. I'm not even including those which you listen to on YouTube. Because having had the Sunday message, you also go home and you enjoy some dessert. You listen to messages from Bulawayo, from Dr. Ian Lovu. Because I assume he is, he is sharing right now a powerful message there. Powerful message there in Bulawayo. Yes. A what? A powerful message. One which when we listen to, we go like, ha, ah, that was powerful. 88 plus roughly 100 my brother the whole year it has got about 54 weeks if we use the same template for our calculations it's 108 plus messages Imagine my sister sitting there on that chair hundred times receiving messages. God granting us life next week on Sunday will be here. Gathered again. Receiving other ministers who have visited us just as we did today. 
and you will be listening to a, another message. And a what? And a powerful message. Hmm. But the question is, why do lives remain the same? <laughs> Why do lives remain the same? My chairman, why do lives remain the same? Ha, Pastor George, you are bothering us today. <laughs> Coming with a lot of questions we are enjoying when you are not here. Hmm, you force us to think about figures. Yes. Hmm. We have been enjoying these past weeks a powerful series by Dr. Ian Love on preparation, planning, goal setting, strategy, its importance in our lives and the change which it brings in our lives. What change brings about fruitfulness? But why are lives not fruitful? <laughs> huh? Brother Elisha, another message. Are we still waiting for another message? Another powerful message? The Lord granting us life will be together for quite some time. This is the first of the many meetings which we have together. Not only on Sundays. Not only on Sundays. So, Pastor George, you'll be also sharing other messages on that pulpit. Yes. So, will lives transform? I don't know. I don't know. My brothers and sisters, it's not just about hearing. It's not just about hearing. Pastor George has finally come. So what message does he have to do? No. <laughs> the way from Zimbabwe. What message did you bring today? Hmm. I want to hear his first sermon. Ah. <laughs> My brother, will you come again next Sunday and sit there on the blue chair and listen to me, just listening. Ah. My sister, we desire fruit. These transformative messages, they ought to transform our lives. Of what benefit will it be to leave the comfort of our homes? Because I know that at home, you've got very comfortable couches on which you can relax. But you chose to come here and sit on the blue chairs. All for what? Ah, my sister, we need fruit. <laughs> we need fruit. 
So will I be standing here again and again and again and again and again and, again and lives are not transformed? Ah, no. <laughs> Today we are here to just talk. Sister Max Miller. Ah, 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 my sister. When the Lord releases a word, and he gives me that word to relate to you. Go and practice it. Go and practice it. Go and do it. I thought that maybe today from Zimbabwe, you know, the Pastor George will be speaking about the anointing. No. We'll be rolling on the floor. And other expectations. And other expectations which you might be having in your heart. But uh, I've been sent to remind you my dear brother, my dear sister in Christ, the same way the Lord was speaking to me when I was back home, that George, because I'm a son to him, I'm a son to him, that George, so you'll be sharing messages, just speaking Powerful messages, and you yourself, you do not practice them. Ah, 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 ah. Of what benefit will it be? It's hot. You are wearing a tie. It's even hotter. So as to be presentable before people. And you do not practice that word which you are sharing. Of what benefit will it be? Be doers and not just hearers. I do believe that if we were putting into practice all those messages <laughs> here we are just looking at one year brother Kita, one year we didn't even touch on the other years which are back then imagine where we would be right now <laughs> you know, powerful messages have been shared by people who spoke with greater eloquence. I think you can hear me. I am, I'm very slow when speaking. That people speak fast with booming voices. Powerful. They have shared, ah, powerful messages on this platform. But it's not just about appreciating the power. That power should work in us. Should transform us. If there is a thing which we would need to remind each other of from this day going forward, when we meet, talk to your sister and tell her that, hey, be a doer of the word. When we meet during our various services, speak to your brother and tell him that, hey, be a doer of the word. And not just hear us.
There will be many more messages which will be shared. Others, not by me, by other people. Other ministers of the gospel, they will also share with us. In it all and through it all, the key is to do after hearing. The most important thing is to do after hearing. It's true, as stated within Romans chapter 10, that faith comes by what? And hearing by the word of God. It's true. Our faith is built as we hear, as we listen. Our faith is what is built, but what is faith? The word has come into my life to build faith. What is that faith? One old boss and say, I've got faith, yet without works. Then another, they will show you their faith through their works. Corresponding action has to follow, having had the word. We then have to take action which is based on that word which we have heard. Having heard, our faith having been built, step number two, we then take action following the instruction contained within that word. That's why scripture then goes on and says, be doers of the word and not just hearers, thereby deceiving yourselves. It's self-deception. <laughs> just hearing and doing nothing about what we have heard. It's self-deception. It's self-deception. You fill a tub with water. You even add wonderful bubble bath in there. And you stand on the side for a whole 30 minutes. Afterwards, you remove the stopper and you go out of the bathing room deceiving one's self. To be deceptive, my brother, to sit here and listen to this man who speaks so slow. <laughs> Listening for a whole hour or for 30 minutes or 45 minutes and do nothing afterwards about what he was sharing with you. So be it Minister Betty standing before us next week. <laughs> Let us be sure to do what the Lord would have instructed here to share with us. Let us be sure to do. One minister of the gospel stood before me, before I came here, 
they stood here and they spoke my sister on the need to let go of bitterness they spoke back then in january we wrote notes in our notebooks just as we are doing some of us today and after the meeting we were discussing going like hey what a powerful message did you hear it powerful message Eish. yet we still held on to that bitterness even up to today that person whom you were bitter with in january you're still was simply deceiving ourselves so the word is released to do a great work within our hearts when it is released it comes to transform us because the words which jesus speaks they are life they are life but we partake of that life by doing the word by following the instruction contained in the word so any other message which will follow from today may it be founded on this message my brothers and sisters it's not just about hearing messages but having heard doing servant of god has been sharing powerful messages on on planning okay i'll just give an example following the series which he is teaching us on spoke about the need to plan and also to commit our plans to the father as stated within the book of proverbs then the father will bless those plans and bring them to pass since the message has been released from its day of release i want to ask you to lift your hand if you have documented any plans to date Have you documented plans? Have you written down your plans? My brother on the camera there, have you written down plans? Please don't answer. I don't want to be a temptation to you. <laughs> My brother, it's not just about hearing. the powerful series that the servant of god is sharing but if we follow up on it practically to do what the lord is compelling us to do in this season fruit comes about when we abide in the word fruit comes about when we remain in the word having heard the word we do not leave it on our notebooks we remain in it in our everyday lives we practice it then will we realize much fruit because as long as there is no doing <laughs> there is no fruit my sister ah as long as there is no follow up on those notes which you are writing on your notebook when you get home throw that notebook away 
you would have deceived yourself. So, the Lord is stirring a new culture within us as DKPM Nairobi. A wonderful culture. A culture of doing the word. We will walk in the word. When we hear the Lord speaking in our lives, we will do what he says. Because we are sharing this word together today, <laughs> we will walk as wise from this day going onwards. Not as foolish, but as wise. Because the Lord God Almighty as we are sharing this word, he is releasing grace to exercise his word. It's what he is doing right now. He is releasing grace to do the word. And we thank him for that. So he spoke, our Lord Jesus. I will read from the book of John on the importance of remaining in the word. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Where he spoke about this wonderful key to fruitfulness. Wonderful key to transformation. John 15 verse 3 going down. It reads, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. It is from this scripture that the words of grace which we speak at the end of services they were taken from. Brother Elisha, you said grace during the online meeting which we had with the Kiambu cell group. It was on Friday, isn't it? Was it Friday or Saturday? Saturday, yes. You said grace, my brother, as we were concluding that meeting. What words did you speak? Maybe you can repeat them before us. Yes, I picked him deliberately because I heard him say the words. So I know that he will most probably be able to say them even right now. The words were, we abide in the word of God and the word of God abides in us. We produce good fruits for the kingdom of God, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. Be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, my brother. The first line there, the first line there, we repeat it every Sunday. <laughs> every Saturday. Every Tuesday. That's how we ought to be working. It's not just a declaration which we say out of mere tradition. That's who we are. Where people abide by the word. 
and the word also abides in us. Then we go in and say, we produce what? Good fruit. So fruitfulness is preceded by what? By abiding in the word, by doing the word, by practicing the word. So we will realize much fruit going ahead. We will realize much fruit as an assembly. In Jesus' mighty name, we will realize much fruit because the Lord is releasing grace to abide in his word. The songs which we sing as a praise and worship team, we abide in them. My brothers and sisters, as they stand here singing, not only do they speak the words, but they also do them. When we say mtakatifu niwewe mungu meaning you are holy O oh God we will also practice it in our homes. We will walk in reverential fear towards the Lord God Almighty whom we sing and declare that he is holy, he is holy, he is holy, he is holy. Be doers of the word and not just hearers. So this word we will remember even during the course of this new week to be echoing within our hearts. In our homes there, this word will be echoing. Yes, my sister, this voice, it will be echo. You'll be hearing it <laughs> there at home. You'll be hearing be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. Because the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, he'll be bringing this word to remembrance. That's what he does. He brings to remembrance the sayings of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, the word. And as he brings that word to remembrance, we do it. We do it. We do it. So, this will be our culture. Ah, This is how we are going to move as an assembly. We are doers of the word. We don't just listen as the Nairobi assembly. Ah, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> That's who we are. What the Lord says, we go and do. We go and do. We go and practice. It's not just about but also action but also action so the Lord has released grace my brother the Lord has released grace even as we are sharing even as we are fellowshipping around this particular word he has released grace to do the word and we thank him for that so we will abide by the word and the word will abide in us and will produce good fruit for the kingdom of God. We will produce good fruit for the kingdom of God. I'll read the same verse 
I'll read the same verse. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Unless you remain in me. I won't exceed the grace which I have been given today. We have come to the conclusion of our message for the day. It's based on our keynote scripture. It's based on our keynote scripture, the one which we read as we began. So I invited this moment that we, we take some time to prayerfully reflect on this word. I don't know how it has spoken to your life. But I invite that we prayerfully reflect on it. We prayerfully reflect on this word. 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 I'll invite the praise and worship team to join me up front. Join me up front. Join me up front as we prayerfully reflect on this word. James 1 verse 22 Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do what it says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do what it says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do what it says. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do what it says. Yes, they will lead us in a song and we will prayerfully reflect on this word.